Have a good side. Who's that side? Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> So here's something a little bit different for you today. We have a tip and tanker. We have a three and a half thousand gallon tanker, a fully opening hydraulic rear door with locking system. It's a tanker that we have done quite a lot over the past years. It's, it's quite different, quite special. The first one of these tankers we done back in 2012 to my reckoning. I actually was the, the draftsman on that tanker. It was a sludge tanker for Norway. Slightly different specification to this, but it just goes to show the range of products that we can make. They wanted a tanker that they could uh, tip up to tip the sludge out. They want a uh, hydraulic reel on the back, fully open in rear door, a hydraulic drive um, vacuum pump. The hose trays up the side of it with clamps for clamping the hoses down. Protectors on the side of the tank to uh, protect the barrel from getting uh, chips from the, throwing the hoses on and off. So it's based on a, a grain trailer bottom chassis and then with a, a full chassis on the, the tanker and you have your mountain points in underneath uh, with your belly plate for the rams mount on it. As with everything, the big difficulty is the hydraulic hosing, because all your hosing has to come from your hydraulic pump. The full length of the tank around your pipping, uh, pivot point at the back and back up to the, the tanker again. So, you know, everything's exaggerated because it tips. So where uh, a normally um, an eight foot hose for your vacuum pump would be fine, it's now a 35 foot hose. This tanker has a, an extra oil reservoir on the side to cool the oil for extended running. It also has the silencer on the side of it as well to help cut the noise down for residential areas. Fully hydraulically operated rear door, a locking system, a controls on hydraulically opening. As you can see on this tanker, the, the dome is turned back to front from normal and that's to accommodate the rail on the back. So that's to keep the rail as close into the tanker as possible. There's hydraulic uh, blade valves inside here and a hydraulic motor that that turns the, the reel for reeling out, for sucking out, as I say, septic tanks, tanks, water, gullies, any, any many applications. And it's all controlled from your three controls here. So you have the controls for your hydraulic locks on the tanker, you have your control for opening the rear door, and then you have your control for the hydraulic reel. So you can reel the hose in and out. So as you can see, all these functions are on your three, your, your valve bank here at, at the back. On other tankers we've done, this has been uh, on a remote in the cab or you can have it as a remote control option as well because you're dealing with road gullies they're full of grit and sand and dirt and dust uh, it lets you open the rear that you can get in to wash it out to flush it out better to make sure it's empty there is safety bars included in this here so you lock this out for if you're working inside the tanker that's why i'm stalling to the side and your reel feeds in through this pipe into your tankers so everything works from your vacuum your vacuum pump at the, at the front so again, uh, you have your hydraulic railer on the back, lovely covered in grease. <laughs> a hydraulic railer on the back, again, that's controlled from here. So you can roll, roll your hose on and off. Now, can I get it to stop with the NC in the middle? No, there, no, not far away. My trusty sidekick has told me that there's a float option in this as well, so you can put it into float that you can pull the, the hose off uh, manually. You don't have to power it off. Getting into the dark evenings, uh, this is equipped with work lights. So if you switch to put on your, your work lights so that you can see where you're working at the rear. And also our nice new uh, rear clusters with the NC logo in the middle. With any business, there's, there's overheads involved in designing all these products. We have engineers for designing products, for product redesigns, for new products. Every one-off, yes, there's initial costs with the design of it, but it's whenever you start to repeat. So as I said, the first one of these we did was 2012. There was costs associated with that. The next two or three iterations of it helped to amortize your costs over the length of it. So this is it's just another product in our range. It's not something we do day in, day out, but it shows the diversity and the, the engineering uh, experience we have with different types of applications for tankers and different uses for tankers, and the experience we have within our design team to manufacture such products.
comes as, as standard with your commercial axles. You have uh, hydraulic over air braking. You have air load sensing, you have hydraulic load sensing and the, the self-steer rear axle as well for manoeuvrability. Toolboxes on either side. We also have a small hand wash station. With a lot of these tankers and a lot of the work they're doing, people are they're in dirty hands, poking at hoses, tan hoses on, getting dirty. More and more tankers are now, the, the boys are starting to put hand wash on them. So you have a small one at the top for your, your soap. You have your one here, you wash your hands, dry your hands, end the tractor, nice and clean. Job's done, job's good. No hand dryer. Well, most farmers, uh, there's a bit of that that goes on. <laughs> you can also see the small brackets on the back for the guys that they can strap the pipes on so they don't jiggle off when they're going down the road. So there's been a lot of thought, a lot of thought put into this electro-hydraulic system as well. So the controls for the rear of the tanker are mounted with the valve bank at the rear, but the controls for the front of the tanker are with the, on the inside and the, the control box inside. With this tanker, it's got a unloader arm on it, or we call it a sludge arm, for doing gullies or, sept or septic tanks. So it's a, a double joint, so it folds down. This one is uh, slightly different from our autofill arm. Our autofill arm is on a, a hydraulic ram, where this is on a hydraulic revo block. So it hydraulically spools it down and lifts it out for getting into deep tanks or deep gullies. You'll see the small ram on the side of the valve. So this is for whenever you switch your vacuum off, your pipe will be filled, still filled with slurry. So if you retract that ram, it lets the pipe clear so you can leave the pipe empty. So whenever you lift the pipe out of the ground, you're not pulling slurry or sludge all over the place. One of the other features on this is uh, the switch. So whenever you tip the tanker, the work lights automatically come on at the front of the tanker as opposed to the ones at the rear on a switch. A second toolbox, vacuum pump oil, and remote greasing. This tanker's remote greasing, so all the, all the grease points for your suspension, for your rams, for everything, is neatly on the side here, so for ease of ease for greasing the machine. That's becoming very popular in a lot of machines now. Everybody likes the easy greasing points. You can get the auto greasers. There's several different varieties of auto greasers that you can have, but I personally prefer that type because each grease pipe you can keep it free, whereas on the auto greasers, they're done in like a loop, but you can have some of your grease pipes that are uh, seized and they're not working, and the grease will just bypass it on an automated system, so I find that much better, because you know yourself, by using it, if it normally takes one pump or two pumps, if you go to it and it doesn't take any pumps, you know you have a problem with your grease pipe. We don't just make tankers for the agri industry, we make them for uh, commercial applications as well. You know, as it says in the name, we are NC Engineering, you know, we are an engineering company, so we can engineer a solution.